Hello everybody and welcome to what is a 20,000, hang on, 20,000? 20, 28,000? I forget what this is, it's a subscriber special! We've been promising for some time and now we deliver possibly the biggest game that I've ever filmed as Portugal. That's right, after about 7,329 separate polls over 17 years, you all have created me a monster. A game so huge in potential and scope that I am already taking out life insurance on my computer because that full thing is not going to survive this. It's going to be atrocious. But before we get started today, I need to tell you about something concerning. Here is Ursa Bear. Ursa Bear was going about their daily life, chomping on crisps, playing Civ 6, when disaster struck. Ursa Bear was unfairly expelled from Oxford University's Civ 6 program. Sad, alone, scared, Ursa Bear made his way to the fabled promised land, the University of Sankor. But there was a catch. The head of the University of Sankor, the vampire Lord Sucklington, refused to let Ursa Bear attend. Without 50,000 subscriptions on his application to enrol, Ursa Bear did not qualify for their world-leading education. The University of Sankor takes only the best. Will you help Ursa Bear stick it to Oxford? Will you subscribe today? Thank Thank you, and back to the video. After a lot, a lot of playing around, I have 61 civilizations, that is every civ in the game and some with multiple leaders, all loaded into a huge earth map, everybody in their true starting locations. We have several modes on, barbarian clans, heroes and legends, monopolies and corporations, secret societies, I'll go into those in a little more detail because this is not as it first appears in terms of how this will affect the game. It is deity difficulty of course, but it says standard speed. No, 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 no. Today we are taking my time. Ultimate, of course. This is the marathon speed we were talking about, but scooped and personalized in a way that I think you'll enjoy. Just like marathon, all techs and civics have been tripled in terms of cost. So you can see already we're on 30 turns for pottery instead of the usual 10. However, there are a few differences. I have left Eureka's and Inspirations on 40% for the boost. I really like that reward, and when you're playing on historical speed modes on that mod, it reduces this to about 10%. I kind of like the reward of actually doing the things that it tells you to do. I mean, it's it's awesome. However, we have era scaling on. The beginning of the game, everything is as usual. As we get through the game, it gets harder and harder and harder to tech up until we get to the future era. These techs are another three times more than they should be. So the tree goes from three times to nine times cost. This is going to be a very long game. Now I left the score victory on because if we get to 500 terms on this mode and the computer hasn't melted, then it's going to be an achievement in itself. But there's lots of different things that we can be doing. You'll notice as well, there are no graphics on this game. The graphics are right down on their basic mode. Yeah, we're pulling out all the stops to make this game work. So historic speeds, every sieve in the game, true start location. This is gonna be a lot of fun. We're gonna be playing this game fairly normal I'm gonna just try and win the game. It's gonna be quite difficult with the amount of opposition that we've got on. However, I'm going to do this as a true European. That's right, I'm going to colonize, and we're gonna be doing this exactly how Portugal did it. Now apologies, Sleepy Sofa Bear, you're gonna to have to crop this in, but this is the map that I will be using today. This is a representation of the Portuguese Empire at its height. We Europeans sure had a way of introducing ourselves to the world in the sort of 1400s and onwards, and Portugal were no different. What we're gonna be doing is trying to prevent and trying to limit myself to basically settling only where Portugal did in real life. The Azores Cape Verde, obviously Angola, Mozambique, big old Portuguese presence in India, as well as a little bit of what I think is at the tip of Singapore, I'm not sure. Apparently there was a Japanese trading post, I knew about China from Hearts of Iron, but I did not know about Japan, interesting. But most importantly, Brazil. We're gonna try and take over the whole of Brazil. Sorry, Brazil, you're, you're gonna have a rough game. But yeah, limiting myself roughly to these colonies are gonna be interesting because it's a TSL game, right? I could just go wherever I wanted, I could just spam settle and we could win the game. So this is gonna give me a little bit more competition because whilst, you know, maybe the Azores and Cape Verde, if the islands exist in the game, that would be pretty easy to go for. Brazil is obviously occupied by Brazil. A lot of other civilizations like Inca and Gran Colombia, and obviously you've got down here Mapuche. That's gonna be difficult. We've got Congo, we've got Zulu, all making sure that this area of Africa is going to be incredibly difficult to settle. Guinea, I mean, that's gonna have Mali all over it. India has two 
two separate Indias and is going to be absolutely jam-packed full of loyalty. I have no idea how we're going to do that. I think this looks like Kuta is, is that's one settlement just in North Africa, just the other side of Gibraltar, isn't it? We'll try and go for that if we can. This is not going to be an exact science. This is going to be the general theme of what we're trying to do, okay? So treat it with a bit of leniency and imagination. All good. This is going to be an absolute mare of the game. Now, you may find that this gets uploaded in patches. It depends on how long it takes to film. I suspect this is going to be a long game, so you may not get the series all in full. Stick with it. It's all reason to follow the channel and then these things can come out and you can go, aha, Portugal's up, let's watch it. And please interact the hell out of this video. It's going to need it. This is, this is the endeavor. Oh yes, and save file and all the mods I'm using are in Discord, so come along and have a look at them. Turn one, turn one, turn one, turn one. Let's have a look and see what we've got. Everyone is very much forced to their TSL location, so Lisbon has spawned in place and I had no option to move it. I think the shape of Portugal, kind of like this on Iberia. I reckon we're probably going to be able to fit another city to the north, maybe one to the south. I need to explore the continent a little bit more to work out how much space we've got. I want to limit myself to Portuguese territory. I'm not going to fight anybody on, on the continent. And that's an important thing about being European. Remember, the world is worse than me because I'm European, right? So all of the other European nations like Spain and France and Gaul and especially England, the ally of Portugal, I may have the odd border war with them here and there. We may, we may scrap, we may fight, but generally speaking, I'm going to respect all of their sovereignty. Spain is a great example. I am not going to try and kill Spain. We will try and become friends with them. And if we can get an alliance with Spain, that would be even better. However, Madrid is about there somewhere. It is right on top of me. Now I have loyal capitals enabled. So everybody has a loyal capital. Your capital cannot be lost to loyalty at all. That is just a mod that I've put in. So Madrid won't go anywhere. Lisbon won't go anywhere. But Spain is going to start here. It's deity. They have five warriors. They will attack me. Surviving this start is going to be challenge number one. Now, there are heroes, there are monopolies, there are secret societies. There are lots of things we can be using, but there are 61 players. So the idea of getting a hero may be impossible. We'll do our best. We will do our best. If I can get Sinbad, then that would be wonderful. Sinbad is kind of who I'm going for here. Monopolies and corporations. Now, this is an interesting one as well. Obviously, culture victories are made a lot more easy with monopolies and corporations. However, there are a few caveats to this. Number one, luxuries are scattered along the map in historical patterns, and that means that some of the civilizations, especially those in South America and in other places along the map, they're going to start with a lot of luxuries, and they may even get monopolies before I do. Stopping the AI from winning a culture victory is going to be even more difficult than me trying to win a culture victory. Like, it's, it's going to be impossible. So we've got to keep an eye on that, and we've got to stop the AI from winning. We may have to do a little bit of naval warfare to stop an a culture victory here and there. The other thing as well, and this is just a glitch with the game, the game only runs with 20 civs in culture victories. So if you spawn into slots 1 to 20, I can collect tourists from them naturally. However, the other 41 civs, I will not be able to take tourism from. So effectively, my tourism is one third of what it should be. So it, it's, a, it's a huge handicap on culture victories on this large map. I don't know if a culture victory will be possible. I don't know what victory will be possible, to be fair. This could be an absolute mare. <laughs> I don't know. I, religion, if I can get a religion, that would be great. Um, there's going to be a huge amount of competition on great scientists and great prophets and things. Gold is probably going to be the easiest way for me to get a prophet. If I can get my own religion, I would be tempted to. I don't know if I can be bothered to go for a religious victory, but who knows? We'll see. We're just going to go for it. But looking at the start, I've got three sea resources and a 2-2 tile that I can be working off the beginning of the game. It's all looking lovely. Spain, however, are going to be the big problem. We need to survive the Spanish start. I'm just going to go and quickly have a look at this tribal village. We're going to go for another warrior. Like, I need armed forces. We're going to have to mount a very difficult defense of our city. And I'm going to go sailing to start with so that I can just get some galleys out and meet people because we are, of course, playing Portugal. Now, keep all of these things in mind when playing a marathon game, right? Some of this is going to be more interesting for uh, the early game than others. All units receiving one site, very handy. One trade route capacity when a civilization is met, very handy. We want to get all 60 trade routes as quickly as we can, so it's spamming galleys out. We can get Sinbad, brilliant, but we just want to meet everyone. Open borders with all city-states. Let me tell you now, unfortunately, there are no city-states in this game. It is a limitation of having every single slot filled with a major AI. 
there is only so many slots the game can handle. There are no city states in this game, unfortunately. Now to counteract that, I do have a mod on called Faster Secret Society Discovery. So we should be able to find secret societies randomly in, in random places. So for instance, owls will be able to be found even though there are no city states in the game, it just may take a little bit of time, but it is possible. However, it means that something like Owls of Minerva maybe isn't as exciting as you might think. I tell you now, I'm going to go for, if I can, Vampires. We're going to go for Sanguine Pact because it is not the natural Portugal choice. I've played Owls games in Portugal. They're very powerful, okay? We all know they're very powerful. It's fine. But I'm going to be playing Vampires because my idea is that I'd love to get Vampire Castles in Brazil, Africa and India and have them funneling into Lisbon. How colonialism focused could you get than using vampires to do that? Also, Lord Sucklington may be the only thing that stands between me and Spain. I, I really tell you, this is going to be horrible. Anyway, yeah, yeah, look, see, see, told you, told you. The idea is to spam these warriors out as quickly as I can and probably form defensive formations on the hill tiles and the woods tiles around Lisbon. If I can just hold on and stop Spain from killing me, that would be great. I also want sailing as quickly as possible because even getting a galley will push Lisbon's strength to like 30 something. Hello Spain! Oh look at that grin. That's the grin of an AI that knows they're gonna wreck me. This start by the way is so difficult that we've had a challenge on our Discord for years now where if you can survive this start against Spain you become an extraordinaire. It's, it's that difficult um, and only a couple of people have actually managed it. Last time we played Portugal I had to remove Spain. That's how difficult this is. This may take a few times. No, no pleasantry. You don't need to know where my city is. You can probably figure out where my city is, but I'm not going to tell you where it is. Writing boosted? Of course it is. I like the fact that Eurekas are full strength. That does mean a lot. That's really good. We also have a trade route capacity. We're not going to be able to use it until we get to foreign trade, and that is approximately 130 turns away at the moment, so... <laughs> Oh god. Anyway, what's in the tribal hut? Uh, void Singers, which we kind of expected, and it, it was that gold? I felt like it might be gold that I just got. Okay, interesting, but not very helpful. Oh, and we got Sanguine Pact. Immediately we got Sanguine Pact. Okay, that is, as I say, that was the mod. This is the Bastard Secret Society Discovery. That is it firing. I didn't know if we'd be able to find any Barbarians early game. I, yeah, that's really, that's really interesting. So here's the thing, okay? This is what I'm gonna do. Spain is clearly gonna attack me. If I get Sanguine Pact immediately, that gives me a vampire that'll help me to defend against Spain early doors. However, we did just get that in a sort of modded way. And honestly, we wanted to do this as not a modded run. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save the game on turn three. If we get defeated, I'm gonna come back to this point. We're going to start not using the vampire. I'm gonna see if I can survive Spain a couple of times not using them. If that works, brilliant. We'll pick up Sanguine Pact after the first Spanish war. And we'll use someone different. Uh, if, if it proves impossible, then I might need the cheat code, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. So we got options, Magnus, will help me to chop out more army. Pingala will help me to tech up and get better army quicker against the historic speed. Or Victor gives me five combat strength and gives me garrison commander, which helps me to defend. I think gold is going to be the most useful thing. Getting culture is going to be really useful as well, but I, I'm not going to get another governor for some time. I mean, not in, for, in theory, about 200 turns. This will get smaller as we actually get more culture and science, but yeah, I'm not going to get a second governor. If I could jump immediately on garrison commander, I'd be a little bit more tempted to go Victor. Having a stronger city is good. I'd rather they weren't attacking my city full stop. Attempt one, I'm going to just go for Pingala. I want the science. I want the culture. 15% is a nice little bonus. We'll see if we can go for that. Now, Spain, like me, minus seven. There was no point giving them an embassy. I'll just tell you that for three right now. Just watch Spain settle near me, by the way. They're going to come right towards me and give me an absolute headache in this early game. I can just tell you that already. And we're keeping an eye on their warriors as they start to uh, congregate on my land. Then we'll pull back to a more defensive location. It's all going to be about early game defense, making sure that we can hold on for dear life. Yeah, here come the warriors. Annoyingly, they've, they've, they've nabbed that tile, which is a, a wooded hill. 
I really wanted to defend on that tile if I could, but it's all right for now. It's all right for now. There is our second warrior. It's going to fortify in the city. It gives it nice defensive strength. We're going to fortify on this hill. I can heal whilst also protecting myself from attacks. That should be okay. I could jump immediately on another settler, but it's unlikely that I'm going to have the loyalty to hold it. Or, being honest with you, it's unlikely that I'm going to be able to defend it militarily because Spain is probably just going to chuck warriors at it and I will die very quickly. I could go monument and try and get a hero. Hero or warrior? Oh, I've got two warriors. Is a third warrior really going to help? I'm getting gold as well. I can buy in a warrior cheaper than I can a monument. i got to go monument because I've got to get the code of laws sorted as quickly as I can. It really has to. This may be a mistake. This may be a mistake, but we will see. I don't mind, you know, pulling these experiments to make sure that we figure it out for everybody else. Oh, if that warrior can move, that would be wonderful. Look at that. They are denouncing me. You're going to have static portraits on this game. Yeah, graphics are turned down to apps absolute minimum. I apologize, but what are you going to do? Hello, Franz. Oh, yes. Lovely. Would you like to visit? No, I don't want you to visit me. I want to visit you. Can we make friends with... Oh, you see, that is interesting. This is France, Eleanor, isn't it? Come on, we need to start getting alliances. Oh, she rejects my admiration. Do I send a delegation? At this point, it's going to be very difficult to do anything useful. Oh, a barb clan over there. I can get a galley for 150... Uh, 55. That is helpful. That is very helpful, actually. I could use that to bolster Lisbon's defensive strength, which would make it much more difficult to hit. And then I could use my galley to go and explore and find other people. We'll wait. We'll wait and see on that one. Either that or what's going to happen is that this galley is going to rock up and siege me from the other direction. <laughs> <laughs> just while Spain attacks it's just gonna sit on that tile and go oh no now you're sieged and I'm gonna sort of sit there and look at it and go you're kidding me why why would you do that yeah there we go here it comes what did I say that slinger is gonna be more of a pain oh, it's, it's the ability for them to do damage to me without me returning the favor that always sucks although they're moving their army about a bit if you pull that warrior off that tile that would be great oh France France is just gonna just come and settle Liberia. Here we go. Come on, Spain. You've got someone else that's going to be much more of a problem than good old Portugal here. We are just, we're just chilling in Lisbon, staring at a barbarian, which is just off our coast. This is the problem, okay? France is the problem here. They've settled right by you and they have a court of love. Like, this is where your attention should be. Oh, God, they're going to, they're going to go and settle exactly where I was going to go and put my second city. Oh, don't play Portugal, they said. It's going to be too easy, they said. It's, it's, it's rubbish. Look. Look, here you go. There's no loyalty in that city. Okay, Spain, go and focus up that. Right, you, 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 mister, you need to get lost. Like, this is not, this is not going to work for me. So we need to go and actually just try and explore a little bit. But I mean, heroes, heroes would be good right now. Our monument is finished. Do I go heroic tales and just gamble on there being a good hero at the beginning of the game? Yeah, I, I feel like a hero is just, I, I need a hero, everyone. Okay, you know, the feeling, the thing is, if this game just descends into a ridiculously long term, horrible, aggressive standoff between me and Spain, I guess that's probably accurate to an extent. I just didn't want it to be like that. Oh my goodness, this barb encampment. You're going to have to go and take this out, Spain, because this is being really annoying to me. Yeah? Use your army to go and help me out. That's what you should do. That's what you should do. Likes neighboring civilizations with popular cities. Oh, Eleanor really likes me. Really likes me. We might be able to make a friend here. I like the idea of a friend. A friend sounds lovely. I don't know why they think that I'm treating city-states well. There are no city-states on this map. They don't exist. It, it, it's not a thing, Eleanor. You need to you need to have a look at the map. What map are you looking at? Beowulf. Beowulf. That's not a bad shout, actually. It's not the one I wanted. Simbad would have absolutely been who I wanted. I would have taken... I mean, Himiko is probably not very useful. Um, Hippolyta? Hercules? Anansi? Yeah, all of those would be really, really good. Beowulf means that I can kill Spanish warriors. And that's... Uh, that would be useful. Question, how long do heroes last for? Lifespan of 30 turns, and you can only summon them once per era. Well, this era is lasting a minimum of 50 turns, so that could be a total waste of time. But I could use Beowulf to go and clear that encampment, and I think that's probably quite helpful. So... 
Yeah, I'm just gonna, you know what, I'm just gonna go for it. I, there's no, I don't have the time to be just trying to get Sinbad. Maybe in, a, in another city, in another world, and I will use my gold to get a galley. Yay, for galley. Um, oh, that is the wrong side. That's, uh, that is a bit annoying, never mind. So you can see here, city-state conversion is disabled. We are unable to get city-states into the game, and that's just because there aren't enough um, city-state slots in the game, or civilization slots. Oh look, Spain is going to destroy the barb encampment. Okay, that's, I guess that's good. Oh, Spain have just moved their warriors away from me. They just moved their warriors away from me. Interesting. Is this the, is this the break we needed? Is this the break we needed? I'm thinking, ugh, I mean, again, I want to keep my territory roughly into the shape of Portugal. And this map isn't quite big enough to have two cities. But if I had one city above Lisbon and just stuck to the side of Iberia, I'm pretty sure that that would be, what would, what would the term be? Close enough. Close enough to Portugal to kind of make sense. I, I like the sound of that. We're going to declare friendship. There we go. We've got one friend. This is the European game we're playing. Oh, Beowulf, he makes my city a lot stronger. I'm just going to have a look. Yeah, this is the top of Iberia. I reckon if I take Toulouse and I keep these two cities and limit myself to those two, that's going to be close enough to the shape of Portugal to kind of get away with it because I won't be anywhere near Gibraltar. I, d I, I, think, I think that's fair, right? Anyway, let's get a couple of slingers. I could go for a Sattler, but there's nowhere to put it that keeps me within the bounds of my own territory. I might have to go for shipbuilding really early to get my units embarking. That's going to be so so hard oh my lord 864 science i might just have to go for a campus instead i can't even go for a harbor anytime soon that's gonna be so bad yeah i have to go for writing no mountains here no reefs so in terms of or geothermal fissures actually so in terms of campuses not great but i need the science i, I can't allow myself to to sort of lose out on that game now we do have the religion extended mod on where are you religion expanded this adds a bunch more pantheons into the game there is still a real risk though that i won't get a pantheon and i'm gonna have to force end turn every turn because there won't be enough pantheons in the game so yeah just we're, we're gonna pray. Pray that we can pick up a Pantheon. I mean, let's have a think about what we're gonna do first. Foreign trade. That's right, that's absolutely what we're gonna do first. I'm gonna move one of my warriors down here. We're gonna head towards where Gibraltar is, and the idea behind that... Oh, I don't know why I moved up that tile. Oh, no, the galley was doing fine for me there. Um, the idea is if we find Africa, I'll get the boost to foreign trade. As soon as we can get trader units, we will be trading everywhere we can. Because we are Portugal, of course. I'll also get maritime industries. That gives me 100% production towards naval units. We'll be able to get our galleys out nice and quickly. Spain have still not declared on me. And I don't know whether or not I should be reassured or innately worried by that. Beowulf I could use to explore. But I just feel like Beowulf should stay by my city because... That's the only defensive thing I've got. Actually, Beowulf and this warrior, I'm just going to keep them by to lose. When this flips, I, I do want to just grab it as quickly as I can. I might have to move Pingala in to solidify the loyalty, but I think it should be fine. Right, good. This galley is now done. That's wonderful. Um, oh, you're just going to have to give it off a city so weak like that. Ugh, fine, 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 fine. Finish the slinger, get more galleys out. Spain have done nothing but make an early army. They really are just going crazy on that early army. What's going to be the best thing for me to do? Do I go for writing and get myself a campus? Or do I assume that I'm going to need archery for defenses? Uh, and maybe there's horses around my land that I might be able to sell? Or do I just skip that and go straight for shipbuilding? 215 turns. That's not that bad. <laughs> Oh dear. Mining into battering rams and ancient walls? Oh man, there's a lot of stuff. As long as I've got Beowulf, I think I'm okay. We're going to go for writing and campus. That's what I'm going to do for now. Oh, that city flipped first. Up there. It's not for me, that city, but um, it is intriguing that France appears to have done a lot of early game settling and they are not sticking around. I expect that's because between uh, another version of France and Gaul and England, there's a lot of loyalty going on up there. Poor Netherlands. The Netherlands, I mean, I never expect Netherlands to do very well, but uh, yeah, that might be a thing. I'm actually going to bring the galley this way. We're going to try and get to lose from two different directions here. Zaragoza, there is another city that's flipped over there. That's interesting. Um, now, do I just wait for Spain to fight these warriors? The AI cannot help but fight barbarians, and this could be the example to let them just use their army to do something counterproductive for a little bit. 
whilst my galley moves in and we siege it. Oh, I'm actually going to get the city from loyalty. Interesting. Yeah, Lisbon's huge compared to other cities, so that's actually really handy. There's Africa, by the way. It's a foreign trade. Done. Oh, I need these. I need to secure the coast. We need to get a lot of galleys into the sea because my traders are going to get pillaged. Uh, remember, with Portugal, we get international trade routes. Uh, they can only go from coastal cities and they can only reach cities on the coast. They have huge range and huge yield, but I can't trade in land, so I have to explore a lot of the coast. We need to get right into the Mediterranean, right up into the English Channel, when we need to get across the sea to America as soon as we can as well. I do have a unique caravel. I do have a unique ability that lets me build Fatorias with them, navigation schools, but these are all things that kick in much later into the game. Education just takes 489 turns to <laughs> unlock. 859 for cartography. Oh, it's fine. I mean, what could go wrong, eh? Well, let Spain fight to this. If it looks like the city is going to be taken manually, I'll swoop in with my galley and Beowulf, because Beowulf can move across hills, so he can go one, two, three, and attack directly from this hill tile. So we'll keep an eye on it. It looks like Spain are just attacking the three city units as well, so that is lovely. Ruin? Interesting, interesting. Spain really haven't been able to press out at all. We might have a really weak Spain here, unless I liberate uh, Zaragoza. This is the thing. If I I liberate a couple of cities for Spain, they will be forced to acknowledge me as a friend because you get a huge positive relationship boost if you liberate the city of an AI. That is a really good thing. Oh yeah, you can attack Beowulf all you want. Beowulf is tough as uh trying to think of something there, tough as a rock. <laughs> That's the best I've got. I've lost all imagination. I'm too scared. I'm too scared. Oh, Spain are actually going to pick up the city now. Interesting. What's happened? Oh, yeah. One city for France. One city for Spain. Maybe. Maybe I should spend as much of this early game as I can trying to stabilize the continent of Europe. Should we be like the peacemakers? Should we go around and just be like really, really helpful? Could be fun. Could be fun to lose a steel flipping to me. Doesn't look like loyalty. Yeah, Spain are not going to catch up on the loyalty there. So that's that's all good. Looks like Gaul are probably going a bit rampant on the continent as well. So that's interesting. Uh, Spain are regathering their units around me right now. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. If, if they do attack me, I kind of wish that they just attack me sooner rather than later because Beowulf still has 22 turns of life and I've got six charges where I can get rid of all of their units. Maybe France will be up for a joint war with me in a bit. I don't know. I don't know whether I should be leaving this galley here or using it to go and explore because we can meet a load of people, get a lot more trade routes, get a lot more era score, see if we can create some sort of European alliance against Spain. Spain, have, they're surrounded by three cities and their army is still sat on my border. It's like, come on, priorities. You've got bigger things to worry about here. They're not going for Toulouse though, so I'm going to get that city naturally. I'm going to bring my galley back. I feel like I need more defense around Lisbon. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, you fool. They have very kindly vacated that hill for me. Beautiful. Okay, that means I can just rearrange my units around just a little bit and I've got both of these tiles cemented and safe. Four turns away from a galley. I think we're actually going to get ourselves another galley very soon. So I am going to allow myself to go and explore with this galley. This may be a mistake. But uh, there are the Netherlands, yes, exchanging ideas on capitals. Amsterdam is still alive, good to see. Toulouse is kind of, it's a little bit over to the right, and Portugal doesn't have this top ring of tusks. But do you see what I mean? Like, it's actually very difficult to identify exactly where Portugal is on this map. I think Toulouse and Lisbon, it's close enough. Two cities, as long as we don't go over further to the right, I, I feel like I'm, I'm happy with this. All right, let's go and discover more, shall we? Who's this? Gaul. Yeah, Gaul. Love to summon your hospitality. I imagine you're probably killing France right now. Yeah, France is not long for this game. <laughs> oh, those unique units of Gauls. Man, they are horrible. What are you building? Great Bath. You have bigger problems right now, France. This is not what you should be doing with your... This is all the wine. The wine has clearly gone to their heads and they're like, oh, big burly people from Gaul. They'll help my problems. They'll help me to build the bath. And you're like, no, France. No, there is England. Wonderful. Cliffs of Dover. Wonderful. There's Rome. Yeah, let's exchange capitals. wonder how many rooms it's going to put in. I don't know which civs, by the way, have got duplicate leaders or duplicate. So, for instance, you've got France. You've got a lot of different people that can rule France or England as, as good examples. I have selected it so multiple countries can exist, but the same leader can't exist. So Eleanor was over here, which means she couldn't be in London. And it means we could have multiple Chinas, but not multiple Kublais. Does it kind of make sense? 
Makes sense in my head. Well, there goes France, my only ally. They're out of the game. I don't know how Spain are going to feel about this, but probably quite positively. That's what I'm guessing. Now, the Barb Encampment, an archer. Ooh, useful. I think this is where Armagh normally is, isn't it? That's... That's it, amusing. Looks like Gaul have nabbed this city from Spain and they are not gonna give that up anytime soon. Loyalty-wise, that's doing fine. I mean, Spain, you've got two settlers here. There are multiple places you can go and settle. You just need to put these down. What are you doing? There we go. Toulouse has flipped over. It says that loyalty is fine. I think it's close enough to Lisbon to be okay. 20 garrison strength because we have a galley that we've just made manually. It's not a barb galley. It's a made galley, which means it will contribute to defenses. Let's get that monument sorted. Let's continue to build galleys. We're just going to scare Spain into submission here. But that second city, that, that's really helpful. That is really helpful. Oh, two turns away from traders as well. Ho oh, ho, oh, beautiful. Now there is dyes there. I do have a farm, so we could boost irrigation. Get that sorted, get the luxury going. Right now though, I think again, luxury is not the biggest of my problems as Scotland. I expect Scotland to do well on this map, providing they can settle. Um, they may have been a bit crammed. Oh yeah, no, sorry. I, I forget just how small the UK is on this map. Gaul are definitely the major force in Europe at the moment. Uh, everybody else is one city. One city for Scotland, Rome, England, two for the Dutch, one for Spain. Gaul has four. So it just shows you how powerful they are. Don't worry, the map will stabilize. Not every country will remain in this game, but the game will select its strongest few and we will have a good game from it. Giant's Causeway, Sun Wukong, okay. Again, probably wouldn't have been a too bad a hero, but it's fine. We're still discovering wonders. Ah, oh, it's one of those games I wish Candy was in the game. Every wonder is in this one. It's, it's a lovely map. I like these TSL maps. They're really satisfying. There's foreign trade. Okie dokie. We still need God King in because I still don't have a Pantheon, but Maritime Industries. Beautiful. Let's get that in now. It means we're building boats at double speed. I want to pump out. So I've got a military strength way above Spain's, which is quite possible when you've got galleys. They're worth 30 strength each. So this number goes big quickly, like 10 galleys. It will cost me quite a lot of gold, which isn't great. But what it will do is mean that they are scared of my navy. So hopefully they won't attack me. Hermetic Order. I was always tempted to go Hermetic Order just because of the chaos. But alas... The Alchemical Society replaces our unique building, the Navigation School, and that's not acceptable for Portugal. Another barb encampment. A spearman can be bought from this one. Very useful. How much are traders? 170. We can afford one now. Interesting. This is where Portugal begins to grow. What are the biggest trade routes? Lisbon has got quite a few, and they're all 9 gold each. So if I buy a trader for 170 gold, it will get 9 per turn. I'll make my money back in 20 turns. Doesn't feel like a lot, but it will get there quickly. And this is what I'm going to use to basically buy all my galleys. Not even buy them, just keep them alive. Other France, there was two Frances and Leon is actually doing okay. I think if we liberate some of these civs, we can keep a sort of, yeah, like a disunited Europe where there's just so many people in it, they don't know what to do. How is Gaul not holding on to Paris, by the way? You have four cities in this area. The loyalty should not be a problem for you. I think the first galley I'm going to send into the Med because there's more people to meet there. Uh, and the more people I meet, they keep sending me delegations. That's 25 gold a pop. Makes a huge difference, actually in this early stage of the game. And I was just thinking, actually, do I go early empire? It gives me a governor, but the fun thing about this is it gives me open borders and I can start selling open borders for everybody. Let's do that. That's actually sneaky. Yeah, first galley I'm going to send into the med. We can meet Phoenicia, Greece, Egypt. A lot of people down there. That's good. Macedon, we'll see who's in the game. Um, this person is going to hopefully go towards Scandinavia very soon and hopefully meet Russia and Poland and Germany. The next galley I'll send down the coast of Africa. And then I'll keep up a small defensive fleet after that point. I do not trust the AI at all. Now, all of my trade routes probably are going to be heading into this sea. I need to keep galleys all stationed here to make sure that they're all safe. So we'll go to ruin first. But um, yeah, something to keep an eye on. Currency boosted. We need to make sure that we are not losing traders to barbarians. That'd be terrible. Oh, there we go. Germany. Lovely to meet you too. Oh, Germany appears to be getting killed. You have three cities, so you're doing a little better. Norway. Honestly, I'm just happy that I'm not right next to Norway. That's always a good thing that oh, these Viking longships, they are scary. That's 24 era score. Wow, we are acing this. I need to get to 51 for a golden age though. We are going to 
to be having a lot of Dark Ages this game, let me just tell you that now for free. This is going to be a terrifyingly difficult game to keep a consistent Golden Age in. I'm really going to struggle on this one. Uh, Maui, oh, nice. Owls, nice. Oh, do we reckon this is Madeira or is it the Azores? I don't know about this map, but I'm, I might count this as being one of the islands that Portugal has. We shall see. It is across the ocean, so it's going to be some time before we can get it, unless unless there is an admiral uh where are you leif erikson lets my units go over ocean tiles early that could be something i could go for if i haven't gone cartography by that point already that's another galley do i keep making galleys or do i go traders oh <laughs> economy all military i've got to go gal right yeah, let's do one get one two one two one two one two like that let's just cycle pottery okay to lose loyalty is starting to shake a little bit on the edges but second population in that city will help uh, a lot i don't know why am i not working this faith tile that is a mistake 555 faith for norway oh -ho. hello you must have got a holy site down probably yeah okay well it'll be interesting to see where the religions go in this game there are 16 available there is a lot of religion scope in this game there is byzantium hello what are you up to only one city if byzantium doesn't have a good game here i'm gonna be so disappointed byzantium easily the best civ in the game I, like it's not even up for debate they they are easily the best in the game you have everything you need to do well here um right writing let's do that perfect Beowulf's only got nine charges on them this might be a problem this this, this might be a problem because the, the issue is as soon as beowulf disappears like I mean, I I'm not worried at the moment because a war means that I could just destroy six warriors immediately. The only thing I could think about would be if I could get a joint war going against Philip with Gaul. They would have a lot of units. I could do 10 turns of war. I could clear all of the units from Spain as soon as I could with Beowulf. And then I could let Gaul do all the heavy lifting. And I could try and get as many people in on that war as I could. It's risky. It is a very risky play. I, I won't lie to you. It could be the absolute worst thing I could do. But it would mean that I actually use Beowulf whilst Beowulf is relevant. You know what? When in Rome, when in Rome, we could regret this. We could regret this very quickly. I'm just going to do a round of diplomacy. We're going to make as many permanent friends as we can from everybody that we've met. The AI generally like us for some reason. I don't know why, but... um. They do. And now I'm just going to go through everyone I know and see how many people want to join in on this war. Probably not very many, but I don't need many. I'm not actually going to be taking any cities here. That's the main difference. So it should be okay. No, nobody even knows the path to Spain. So that's that's interesting. Okay, fine. So um, you can see the units have been pushed out of my land. Beowulf can now start challenging these warriors and we can start destroying them quickly. I'm going to act very defensively, but if we can get rid of a bunch of troops from Spain, this will help a lot. Okay, turn one was pretty good. Let's just use Beowulf as much as we can. As much as we can. We're defending nicely. Just challenge one unit per turn. We will shred Spain's army. Me. Cleopatra, beautiful, and Zulu. All right, I don't know how I met you, but oh no, Zulu's got a scout right here. And Carthage, wow, everyone's being met all at the same time. Lovely. Oh, there we go. Spain are beginning to actually attack normally. Luckily for me, they're attacking a fortified unit on a hill and in a wood and with the ability to heal every turn. So that should be fine. Beowulf might just need to challenge a couple of people now. Challenge and step back. Perfect. Go on, you, you come get me. Sweden. Sweden has a terrible start on this map. They have no speed whatsoever it's very very funny Ethiopia yep and Mali we're discovering a lot of people now we've already got 18 trade routes but I have no gold or production capacity to actually build the traders so this is a little bit uh, a little bit less useful oh that warrior is actually taking more damage now than I had hoped Sparta wonder if both Greeces are in this game probably not given the chaos of the map but well we'll see another challenge another warrior defeated I think I'm going to try and pull this unit back to safety ruin is about to fall and I'm just moving a galley in to protect my trade oh the trader will get knocked back actually so I probably didn't need to do that but never mind oh, I really want that settler if I can nab that settler that'd be awesome I could bring it back to my lands hopefully and then go and settle uh, I think I've got one city, isn't it? It's, it's like one Portuguese city just the other side of Gibraltar. Kind of roughly where that mine is, or that salt is. And then, say, Azores. We also want a city down in 
Uh, Cape Verde, Guinea, that sort of area. Poland, lovely to meet you. Mulan, nice. Actually, the AI is getting heroes, so I'm pretty glad we didn't wait too long on our heroes because we would have found that disappearing very quickly. Oh, thank goodness, there are choices on Pantheon. Not many choices, mind, but that is choices. Okay. What are we going to do? Right, God of the Sea, production on fishing boats. That is something that would be pretty handy. Faith from fishing boats? That is not production, but we'll be buying things more than we're producing things. So I'm thinking Faith will actually let me get my heroes back quicker, so maybe that's not a bad idea. Remember, there is a mod that I'm using, Religions Expanded. It adds more pantheons and more religions into the game. You have to do it on any game above 20 players, otherwise you run out of pantheon choices and it's always horrible. City Patron Goddess would let me put my campuses down quicker that could be relatively useful. I don't really have a lot of other stuff going on in my start at the moment. I do have one plantation, one mine on a bonus resource. Yeah, we're not <laughs> talking about a crazy thing. Goddess of Festivals, food from plantations is relatively interesting. I think boats. Boats has got to be the thing. It's whether or not I go for thief from fishing boats or we go from production for fishing boats. I think we're going to be using gold a lot here. So I'm going to go faith. It seems really weird, but I want to be able to get my heroes back. And this could be a way of doing that. Yeah, you know what? Sometimes you just have to go for your gut. I mean, you can attack Beowulf if you want. It's a brave decision, that. It's a very brave decision, but um, I guess he will be disappearing in five deaths. The good thing is I will pick up a single heroic relic. And that'll be beautiful to just keep keep the faith trickling into my empire. Um, I do actually want to get rid of God of uh, the God King, sorry, as well. That would be good. I mean, the gold and the faith is useful, but two production is probably better than one faith, one gold. One more challenge. That's Beowulf out. No more charges here at all. So that is a shame. But never mind. What you're gonna do? He's done the good stuff. Uh, there's a second trader, by the way. Perfect. We'll keep these trade routes coming out as quickly as we can. This city's going to flip. This is going to be an absolute nightmare for me. If that city flips, then yeah, we're going to have a problem keeping the loyalty in this area. My Sene. Oh, I, I, I'm just, I'm leaving my galleys just sort of lurking in places because if I can liberate cities on my way around, Diplo Favor could be a very good resource. Hello, Russia. Some Petersburg is there. Lovely stuff. I don't think you're going to be able to settle there, Sweden. Nice try, though. You know, somehow I actually did manage to steal a settler from the three cities in Paris. I like that. That's really handy. That's really, really handy. I'm going to have to try and get the settler back somehow in a safe way. But um, if we can, that is a city that we can settle, say, in Africa, which would be awesome. And look at this trade route to Egypt. That gives me the Egyptian bonus of the two extra food, as well as the fact they've got, I think, a holy site and something else in the city that gives food and faith. So that is, is that just a holy site. That could just be a holy site, to be fair. Anyway, trading with Egypt, that is not a bad idea at all. In fact, actually, Toulouse could probably do with a route like that as well. Once it has a granary. Oh, my son, I did get liberated. Never mind. Okay, we're just, again, we're lurking with my boats. My boats are just doing a, doing a fun little lurk. Feels like at the rate that Spain have been chucking warriors out, I don't feel like we've made the impact that I kind of hoped I would have done. But never mind. The good thing about Portugal, though, something to point out, is that all my traders have to go via sea, which is really handy because it means they're not going through Madrid. I could just see early game it being a problem that all of my routes are trying to go through Iberia and they're just pillaging all of them. But no, we can actually send them by sea, which is lovely. Oh, hello. Bit of science from trade. Um, That's good. 15 gold. Actually, you know what? That London route is lovely. Although it does go through the barbs. It's a bit annoying. Why would you do that? Sterling again through the barbs. All of these are through barbs. Ugh. This one is a slightly different direction though. I think by the time it gets pillaged, we're okay. But we'll probably have to keep an eye on that one. Yes, that's right. Attack me over a river. Leave yourself exposed next to my slinger. Give me a promotion. There's a lot of good things that's happening in this little skirmish between Portugal and Spain right now. Gaul. Gaul is collapsing. And that's entertaining yeah ruin's gonna go zaragoza's gonna go i would have thought a five population capital would have been plenty to keep the loyalty but clearly not only one turn left on beowulf no i might as well do some damage against the unit then with them fine bye bye beowulf bye bye actually that epic i might be able to sell for a lot of gold i don't know i don't know if i want to sell it it might just keep it for a little while i'm gonna liberate paris really i am oh my goodness I get to bring, oh, Eleanor back into the game for 300 Diplo favor. Yes. Oh my goodness, that's wonderful. And grievances against me have massively fallen now because I liberated Paris. And 
It's 300 favor. I mean, I doubt that anyone could afford it right now, but this might be. Oh yes, it's very fruitful. Uh, B BRB, whilst I just try and find the best way of selling this to the AI. Yep, there we go. I just picked up about 80 gold per turn and about 800 gold up front from flogging that all. That's um, that's a that's a nice little that's a nice little improvement to my economy. Just a small one. Uh, I think that I'm probably going to celebrate by just buying some traders. I'll send three from Toulouse and then I'll send another two from Lisbon. Beautiful. Oh bugger. Ah, I moved my Sattler there and then the city flipped and I'm going to lose my Sattler, aren't I? Damn. Oh, I thought I was being so clever by stealing that Sattler. I'm going to go and get it back. Yeah, I thought so, Spain. There we go. We, <laughs> we officially managed to get our peace with Spain. That was a good old war. We managed to really scuttle a large chunk of their army there. I, I'm quite pleased with myself. And finally, a very special shout out goes to Glorious Petra, Matthew Wilkinson, Paul Coffey, Doughboy91, Sean Gratiz, Portland, Scott Stratton, Major King Kong, Devil X, Skeptical Bear, Kroger Brand Trail Mix, Alex Noob, Cinnamon Beard, Petra Ryan, Matthew Hatch, Amir E.C., Rom88, Radio Torre, Private Selection, Genoa Salami, Boy Zorro, Callum Billy, Garrett Gowan, Polar Bear Ray, El Truand, Creston, RB Hedge, Mushkin Mandeltort, Ezri Dax, Debel Time, Shoelace. Thank you all for your support, it's amazing, see you all next time, goodbye! Bye!